Okay. So I intended to get back to this sooner. Life got in the way, as it always does. But I promised I would do this, and there is no better time than now. Last time I did the Orc campaign, which is really not, not a terribly compelling campaign, uh, it was done last, but it was also a very heavy tutorial with some questionable tutorial decisions looking back now. You really want to teach players to click the button to move when you can just right click? I think that, that that's a mistake. Uh, this may crash. Don't worry though. Okay, so the cinematic crashes. Um, but we can watch it if I go if I play it through VL, <laughs> through VCL or VLC, what is it called? Video Lab something, VLC, yeah. <clears throat> so one, one thing you have to understand about game development, especially when you're uh, getting towards the end of a, of a project, is that every computer in the frickin' studio has the game up and running and usually at like an opening screen like this one um, just playing the music in the background so all you hear when you come into work and until you leave and sometimes you don't leave work is this is the music of the game and let me tell you that'll drive you nuts and uh, I, I was just I was already starting to cringe just from hearing it um, it didn't happen last time because things are going smoother, but now I'm stressed out because things are not going so smooth. <laughs> All right. Certainly the recent attacks against the internment camps are evident enough. Ants. Those ants, man. <laughs> Wait, I, I'm sorry. I got to stop. So <laughs> you see these ants on the ground? They're all individually rendered. <laughs> Uh, there was a huge fuss about um, cinematics and how much time they spent on like innocuous, irrelevant details. Um, like, why are you showing ants crawling on the ground in Lordaeron? Does it really add anything to the scene or help tell the story? No, they were just doing it to show that they could do it. Um, yeah, Pardo had a had a couple fits about uh, the cinematics department during uh, during game development, but that was that was one of them. I remember the blow up on that day. Lots of fades to black. I think that's the longest video in the game in terms of uh, showing stuff. Probably because it was one of the early ones. Um, you'll notice in the later videos there's a lot of fades to black in the middle <laughs> of things. Um, and that was simply time issues. So that was the prologue right there. So he's Medivh came, he warned them, hey, you're poised on the brink of war, but he couldn't have been more vague if he had said, hey, a demon threat is coming, they're the guys behind the orcs, you remember the orcs who, uh, like, you know, slaughtered the shit out of you? That would have been a better warning, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, be careful. So I laughed a couple times there. The first one was, uh, Arthas has this line, can the formalities, Uther? And there was a big argument about, uh, do they have canneries in Lord of <laughs> Because that's where the term comes from. Um, and uh, the second line was just the cheesy... Uh, cheesy dialogue between uh, Uther and Arthas about uh, Arthas's father, the king. Every level that has villagers with names. Farmer Ted. Uh, Ted was the web guy at the time. Ted Park. Thanks, Ted. <clears throat> hey, look, a quest. I forgot about that. I remember we didn't get that till pretty late in the game. The uh, the I don't even think. <laughs> it 
And then they, they're like going into the house and then coming back out in their armor. Um, how do I? Is this destroyable? No, it's invulnerable. Ugh. Yeah, we didn't get that uh, exclamation point thing until late. Pretty late. Sure. <coughs> oh, this is Tim's level. Yeah, it's got to be. Oh, Alicia, that's his wife. Alicia is Tim's wife. James Garrett, Logan, Stephen, Andrew. These are kids of other developers' friends. Not necessarily from Blizzard either, just friends he that Tim knew. So whoever made the level, it's their friends and family that ends up in the in the mission. Thinking back on it now, when I was working at Blizzard, I think one of the unfortunate things that happened was uh, Tim Tim left the company because he felt he couldn't uh, move up the ladder, but he went to form his own company. The, the logic was sound at the time. Now it's questionable at best. <laughs> oh, so I wrote all these. All this text here. <clears throat> Learn Divine Shield. An impenetrable shield surrounds the paladin, protecting him from all damage and spells for a set amount of time. I wrote every word of this shit. Ex no, every single one of these. <clears throat> that was a lot of my time back then. Um, making him invulnerable. I think this is actually better right now. 1.5 additional armor. Because how much armor does an individual guy have? Yeah, they start with 2, so 1.5 is almost doubling it. Uh, scroll of healing. Like, I need more healing, really. I remember during the, the bug fixing process, like, we would get really stupid bugs all the time, like, Hey, you can attack those guys while they're escaping. Just all these little things that, yeah, you could do that, but doesn't it just make a player feel smart if they pull it off? To which the answer is yes. <laughs> so let them. Like, that's one of the mistakes that um, junior game designers make a lot. Is they're like, oh, the player's not doing it exactly the way I intended. I have to stop them. And like safety it so they can only do it one way, the way I want them to. Big mistake, big mistake. If players find a way to cheese the system, I wonder how many people get trapped down there because they. This looks like a dead end. Looks like you can't get up there because of the way the lighting works. So the lighting doesn't shine up hills. The the lighting's. Um, here you'll see. See how it lights up now. Isn't that weird? Because uh, it's in the it's in the fog of war. That's what it is, and you can't see up hills. So yeah, I wonder if anyone ever got trapped down there. I bet some people did. <laughs> Anyways, it's a mistake to try and force the player to play the way you want them to play. If they can find a way to cheese your your game, and as long as it's not egregious or completely breaks the game. Like, if, if it's just a little cheese, like killing a guy before the, it's intended and stuff like that, just let them do it. It's more fun. The player feels like they got away with something. And... Tomb of Strength. What Tomb of Strength? Did I get a Tomb of Strength? Oh, because it's used immediately. Wait, there's got to be some... No, we did that already. We did that already. Tim's levels always had some funny little nooks and, and crannies, and stuff you could actually occasionally miss. I think we safetyed a lot of the stuff you could miss on this one. I probably missed something over here. Let's see. That was a really well-designed map. I think it was. I think this is a better introduction to the game than the tutorial was. Oof. Works. <sighs> the game's really slow-paced. Oh, the graveyard. This is a fun one. So I think it's around midnight that the... Yeah, the corpses of all the dead villagers will appear here. And they'll have the same names as the ones who died. Um, if you watched uh, 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 Abelhawk's 
videos, he shows you this one. So I'm not going to hang around here for God knows how long. But that's one of the fun little unique things that Tim would put in his levels that was always, always interesting. What? What? Get away from him! Damn it! Really? Takes two hits? God, we should have made that just like one hit point. So, so lame. There was no reason for that to take more than one hit from any unit. Should have just literally been one hit point. Oh! Get in there! Tracy's armory. Tracy was a sound guy. He was one of the sound guys. Hit the, and Bob's guns. Bob was a programmer. I don't know if that's named after him though. Maybe it is. Yeah, probably it is. Bob is a programmer. He worked on the original uh, StarCraft. The first StarCraft. I feel like there was a secret here, but I can't remember. Sometimes you had to zoom in like this and you could see stuff. Mm, not this time, though. Oh. Wow. Oh. Mana. Hey, mana is important if you want to play a little bit quicker. That was the point of those mana potions and, and mana spheres and stuff, by the way. It was so players didn't have to sit around waiting for their mana to replenish. By the way, you can tell which game designers are into uh, cinematics, into the video, or the cinematic portions of the game by whether or not the units will turn to face who's talking. <laughs> because the people who didn't give a shit, they just left the units standing there, and the people who cared would have, like, if someone's speaking, one or two or, or all of the units would, would look over at them to see them speaking. And then sometimes it was a time consideration, but most of the time it was stuff like that. <clears throat> Little subtleties. What does this score mean? It means nothing. There's nothing to compare it to. That was another problem. Like, we should have had, like, some... Like, if you get this score, you did well. Like, a star rating? I know it's lame, but... It's actually cool for completionists. <clears throat> but hey, you know, we were young and dumb. Well, he just defends, right? Hey, what are you doing, lazy assholes? Get on it. This town hall is one... Extra far away, isn't it? I'm here to help. Ready to work. Two, three, five. So it's supposed to be five, but it looks like I can get an extra one in there and not lose any efficiency. Ready to work. Okay. Let's build this one. If they came from the right, the next one will come from the left. And 60 gold. Everything seems so expensive to me for some reason. I don't know. So after he's done repairing that, he'll build that farm. So you can queue commands like that. That was a really cool feature, I remember. I remember I was super excited about that because uh, I'm not the best uh, macro manager. I was a good, I'm a good micro management player, but terrible micro manager. So when that feature came in, it allowed me to do things like queue up a bunch of crap to, for a peon to do while I was micromanaging my units. Control zero. And then you can waypoint onto your hero and put your barracks on uh, one of the control keys and so on. It's really, really useful. And even when they're on a waypoint on the hero, they're still going to do things like attack, and do smart stuff. Slay them all. A common, uh, commonly used phrase in Blizzard games. Because it's um, Star Wars. <laughs> uh, who says it? 
I think the Emperor says that, doesn't he? So if you wonder why we drop so many health potions and stuff, there's two reasons. One, uh, we were really worried that, that players just don't understand how to play. Like, really, really, really worried. <laughs> so we made sure that um, they would get enough stuff that they could totally totally survive no matter what happened. He's totally trapped. So you can attack the trees? <laughs> um, but yeah, we were really worried that people would just have no idea how to uh, how to play this game. And so Hey! I forgot about this. The Dragon Hunters. Chris Metzen. The, uh, the dwarf was uh, voiced by Metzen. Chris Metzen. Boy, it's been so long since I've <laughs> Highly skilled sharpshooter, effective against air units. Can gain the long rifles upgrade. Oh, but not in this mission. Not in this mission. Oh yeah, we removed Black Mask to show you where to go. I forgot. It's five bonus fire damage to the attack of a hero when carried. The hero's attacks also do splash damage. So good. And you could totally skip that quest. Ooh. No! Oh, the shame. The shame. Well, he was in the Dwarven group anyway, so he was a loser. Hi, Upkeep. You are wasting gold. You suck. You suck at the game. Did I hide anything? No, I didn't. No. This isn't my level anyways. Whose level is this? I think this is also Tim. Doesn't feel like a Tim level. Though. Maybe it's a. Maybe it's Dean. <clears throat> it's probably Tim. Or it could have been Matt. Uh, I remember we spent so much time discussing and arguing about the armor and damage types. It was such a uh, clusterfuck. Because it's so hard to explain in a succinct way. <laughs> without like a frickin' chart. <laughs> I don't know if anyone... I mean, it created clear unit counters. It's just awkward as hell to explain to the player. That background stuff is always funny. Chapter 3, Ravages of the Plague. Three days later in Altarok, Arthas and his men wait near a crossroads along the King's Road. Crossroads, King's Road. Terrible writing. <laughs> I remember we did all sorts of little fun stuff in cinematics. Things they can't do in the game, like dismissing a summon, their summoned water elemental and things like that. And we reasoned it as... Use chains. Uh, we reasoned it out as, like... Of course they have abilities beyond the scope of what's shown in the game or what you, the player can do. <clears throat> um, and we can show these things in the cinematics. And so we did. <clears throat> and that's where you put the Bracers of Agility? Gotta be kidding. Uh, 
so the reason I'm putting them on Jaina is um, she'll be in the back row and she has a ranged attack and it'll splash and that's all good stuff. <laughs> that's all good stuff that you want. See? Dirt dirt road pathways. You want to be a good level designer? <laughs> Make dirt road pathways everywhere. Hey, a quest. Hi, Stacy. Oh, really? Something to miss. You don't say. Child, child. Who didn't name these? Lazy. Fucking lazy. Who did that? And then you named these three? This is a Deltry level. This is such a Deltry level. Del Dave, Dave Hale. Yeah, yeah. This is this is Deltry. <laughs> so when I say it's a Deltry level, I don't mean to, I don't mean to be mean, but there's a certain sloppiness to his levels, and I don't know. They just tend to look more more drab and dreary than uh, some of the other designers' levels. I wonder how I'm going to see my own levels now. <laughs> well, we'll see. But there's also like a certain amount of just like, this guy's not named, but these three are. And they have triggers on them so that they always are laughing. And these two kids aren't named, and this trigger stopped working. They were running around this. Maybe they don't run around it at night. But, like, if you're going to bother to do that, uh, I don't know. Okay, Achilles. <laughs> and villager, and villager, and villager, and villager. Name Tim, name no one else. There's certain logic to it, because he's the one who speaks and, and has something interesting. Like, And if we had followed that throughout, like anyone who has something interesting that they do, you name them, and but not anyone else, but we didn't. <laughs> Gargle Mel. What? What just happened? There's some weirdness when I click near the edges. In taxes. Does he have something? No. Maybe that was a mistake then. Maybe I shouldn't have killed him. Hey, a quest. Donnell Barton? Wait a minute. Is this my level? No, it can't be. Why is she here? <clears throat> Did I make this level? Is this my level? I need to look this up. <laughs> One second. I have a list of the levels that I worked on. Where's my resume? Did I lose it? Ubisoft, Vinci Code, Simon Hill, Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos, Human 6. Yeah, that was the only human level I did, the culling. Why did Deltry use my friend's name in his level? Donnell Barton is one of my friends, and she appeared in... I'm here to help. Maybe I named a few... So weird. I can't. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe I worked on this level a little bit at one point. I don't think I did. It's possible. Sometimes you got to pull them out so you can get the damage on them. That's really strange. But it just it just goes to show like how you can't <clears throat> how you don't you don't know what people. Do. Each of us didn't know what the other guys were doing on their levels. <clears throat> and so 
people certainly borrowed from each other. Um, people definitely borrowed from each other a lot in this while we were making this game. Captain. Maybe it's a Dean level. Could be a Dean level. Did I? I I don't remember working on this level. I don't think I did. But Donnell Barton should not be on this level. <laughs> she appears in a later level. Uh, Undead 2, Digging Up the Dead. And it doesn't make any sense that she'd be here and there. Unless she traveled down the King's Road to... Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Bandits. These awkward, squarish. These corners drove us nuts. Me and Tim, anyways. I think we were all we were always trying to smooth those out in some way. But some some of the level designers just did not give a shit about that kind of stuff. <clears throat> These are supposed to be burned crops. I think it was burned corn. So now we're on the other side of that bridge. Whoa! Just hiding in the trees? That's weird. So the reason I don't get Divine Shield is there is... You can just pull him out of any combat. He'll, he'll never get mowed down. I think the AI specifically chooses not to target him a lot of the time. Optional. Okay, well, if it's optional, then we should do it before we keep going. Or we'll miss out on whatever benefit it gives. I think it's just teaching you what it does. Then why are there undead here? Wouldn't it kill them? If I if I heal the undead and it kills them, shouldn't the fountain kill the dead who are hanging around? <laughs> Anyways. I don't even know why we taught that. I, well, I guess it's important to teach that. Because there are levels that have them, and they do appear in multiplayer on occasion. It's so hard to know that you can go up these hills. Lazy. It's so lazy. So, that's just an example of a, of a lazy level designer. Uh, Kalthuzad just stood and did this animation. But, you know, like on a Tim level, he would have done a cast animation on each skeleton. <laughs> I know it seems kind of stupid, but it really makes a difference in the overall feel. Is the difference between someone who just wants to get something done and someone who wants to make it look really good and feel polished. <clears throat> there were no cultists with the Mac Necromancer. <laughs> Yeah, they're building a base, I know. People know. People know what building a base is. We taught them that already. Did you really <laughs> Did you really have to show them building for that? Oh my god, I have to wait. Holy moly, he does some damage. <clears throat> Why do he move? That's strange. What are you doing? That's really strange behavior. Was the is minimum range a new thing? What is that? 
What are you doing? Oh, he's trapped. Ah. <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, that's right. When they're when you click on trees, they'll pad through stuff. There's some abusive things you can do with that, by the way. Um. There we go. Long rifles. <clears throat> Long rifles, by the way, is a joke from uh, uh, Braveheart. There's a scene where they're in the forest and they're talking about making spears. And one of the guys makes a joke like, oh yeah, what is it? No, Mel Gibson has the line, we'll make spears twice as long as a man. And one of the guys goes, some men are longer than others. <laughs> Long rifles. It's a terrible joke. <clears throat> okay, I need to build more of these because I fucked up. Did we really have a mission where it's just a frickin' 30 minute timer? That's really what this mission is. <laughs> such a slow paced game, like, I mean in retrospect, such a slow paced game. These days, no one would ever tolerate a mission that goes for 30 minutes. Just, no way. Oh. Right. <clears throat> oh, hi. Uh, why, why, why would you hate this mission? This mission's great. No, I'm just kidding. I'm playing through all of uh, Warcraft Three, just to see what I remember. It's been 15 years since I last played, and uh, <laughs> it's weird. Because I'm not remembering uh, any too many specific things that happened while I was making the game. I can't see all of chat, so I only see half your question. 3.30 a.m.? Oh my god, go to bed. What are you doing? <laughs> my favorite moment while working on the game was definitely the calling of Stratholme. And uh, setting up the murdering of the villagers and everything. <laughs> Later that afternoon on the road to Stratholm. So this is one of those cinematic ones. I can't remember if I did these. I did some of them. Uh, yeah, the significance of killing the villagers before or after. <clears throat> it was really just a, it was a player choice. And it was one of the few player choices in the game that I, th I thought was pretty cool. Um... Because if you kill them before they turn, it's so much easier. But on the other hand, you're killing people. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're going to turn into zombies, but it's still, you have to murder people. And I thought that that was the more compelling choice and made more sense for the story, since this is about Arthas's downfall. <laughs> Chapter 6, The Culling. Early the next morning on the outskirts of Stratholm. So everything in this mission, I did. Uh, other than I had Mike Morheim the president of Blizzard at the time, he helped me out uh, because my triggers got really messy. <clears throat> so he sort of took over. He's a programmer as well as being one of the founders. So he sort of took over those triggers and smoothed it out because I had all sorts of little bugs in there and I wasn't sure what was causing them. Um, but the concept and all that, uh, I did the, the map and all the things on it and everything and all the cinematics as well. I did get an art pass um, from one of the artists, Alan Dilling. He worked he worked on it as well to make the city look a little prettier. So I'll point that out when I see it. And I'm trying to remember what secrets I had in here. Let's see. <clears throat> well. <clears throat> If you think about it, 
by purging the city, he's saving more people than than he's uh, losing. Because if the if even a few of these zombies escape, they go to another town and they kill people. So, on the one hand, he's right. On the other hand, maybe there was another way to deal with this, and he could have figured that out if he had frickin' bothered, but he didn't. <laughs> Warcraft 4? <IV>, really? <laughs> well, I don't know about Warcraft 4. I'm sure it's in the works. I mean, I don't know anything. I don't work there anymore. I don't work at Blizzard anymore. So while it is possible there is a Warcraft 4 in production, um, I don't know. It, it seems unlikely to me. It's certainly not any time in the near future. I liked making all these little patterns and stuff. Once you get, I think, four riflemen, it's like the perfect amount to basically one-shot this shit. Oh, I hate that so much. Originally, we just had you murdering women and children, by the way. But when I made the triggers for this, the original one, I thought was much was much more fun. Uh, I thought it was much more fun to just murder the, the women and children. And I had children on this, by the way. The original triggers still have the children in there grayed out. The original plans for the story? All it takes is actually enabling the trigger where you kill the children and don't have them turn into zombies unless Malganus is there. I know, I'm just saying the triggers are already there. If someone wanted to um, change it back to the original way where you, could, you would kill the women and children, it would be easy to do. Easy, easy, easy. Half of them aren't attacking the building. Something's wrong, actually. I think there's a bug. If I could have added one thing? Just one thing? <laughs> um, I would have kept the original culling. I thought it was more interesting and darker when he was killing women and children. It's almost the same arc as Anakin's... You know what? There's a lot of parallels between the... Um, between the Jedi and the Paladins. Most of the the parallels between this game and Star Wars were from Chris Metzen. Um, as you probably have guessed, he's a huge nerd. Such a nerd. So I think that all of this is invulnerable, but let me just check. Oh, it's not invulnerable. In theory, I could go up there and, like, murder stuff. Oh, crap. He's all the way over here. I don't even remember why that town was there. It was just to sort of provide, like, a premise, like, this is Mulganus's base. But even if you destroy it, it's not like... I'm gonna run up here to the zoo. <clears throat> so you can actually see there's monsters in here. They're all neutral. Uh, but there's these rats. Filson! There you are. And he drops a talisman of invasion. So, I'm gonna get that. <laughs> if you've ever wondered what would be in the Lordaeron Zoo, well, now you know. So we're gonna kick the mortar out. I only built him for the AoE attack, because the AoE attack is the only thing that can kill uh, Filson. Even though they would destroy these buildings a little bit faster, it doesn't matter. Do you see that rat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where those rats came from or why they were there. I don't remember placing those in the mission. <laughs> I think it's... There's no triggers for that. But but now that I see them there, I'm like, hey, that would have been a cool way to like go, hey, you got the rat secret. 
<laughs> I think I did that cinematic. Tim made the level, and then I put in the triggers for the cinematic. That's the way I remember it, anyways. But I just noticed some annoying little things, like uh, when I did that camera move across as they spoke, there was like the sound effects from the fire were closer, so it was louder all of a sudden. Just weird, annoying things. Greater healing potion. Like, I'm gonna pick that up. God, kidding me. This is this this is one of the reasons that we made the orbs of in of mana and health in uh, the Frozen Throne. It's because no one was picking up the potions, so it was like, why would we? Why even have them? <laughs> this would have been a great thing to have the um, the defensive maneuver, which we call it. This one, defend. <laughs> <clears throat> Should have just started the player with it. That's the thing that we didn't think about too much was like <clears throat> we should have started the player with the things that made the level more fun rather than force them to build it every time. It's I mean, I know we're supposed to be training the player to play the multiplayer game, but not really. Of course. We always had a habit of giving uh, undermined uh, gold mines. <laughs> I think that's because that was a real gold mine, and so <clears throat> the point was the faster you got to the town and saved it, the uh, faster, the more gold you'd have when you did take it. When you did take it. Nothing terribly exciting in these scores, but I don't know, it's information. Chapter 8, Dissension, early the next morning at Arthas's new base camp. I remember the premise of this mission. I don't remember doing this mission. Hey, hey! I know a secret when I see one. <laughs> oh, pathing. Frost Revenant, get him! Ow! 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 ow. Kill him! Oh, the Sobe mask. I'm here to help. I forgot about the betrayal of the mercenaries. <clears throat> but yeah, you know. <clears throat> it's part of his downfall. His continuing... Transgressions to the dark side. Chapter 9, Frostmore. The next day at Arthas's base camp. <clears throat> <clears throat> Did this mission just break? <laughs> that looks like it broke. Oh. I hit escape. Okay. The game just crashed. Uh. <laughs> ah, fatal error. That's okay. <clears throat> I knew that would happen. I think this was everyone's favorite video from the game. <clears throat> it was mine, anyways. Boom. That's the Metzen walk, by the way. They recorded him walking because he has a an interesting uh, gait. <laughs> G-A-I-T. <laughs> well, that's the human campaign. So, overall, I would say, um, I mean, it held up okay. 
I guess. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'll put it this way. I, I can't remember much of the development anymore. It's just been too long. I remember little things, but not any details of how things went. I remember the most explosive arguments, but I don't remember all the little things that went into the game along the way. And I think I can attribute this mainly to that I had my nose buried in my level. So like if I, uh, uh, we'll get to the other levels when I get to the, when we get to the other campaigns. Um, but the culling took up a huge portion of my time because it was such a complicated level with uh, Mal'Ganis doing all these uh, attacks and animations and stuff and that had to loop like there was lots of four integer A loops four integer B loops and things like that when I initially made the triggers and that's why it got so complicated that a programmer had to uh, the president of the company had to come in and use his programmer knowledge to, to fix it hmm but um, gameplay wise like I don't think it held up all that well I think it's very slow paced I think that a lot of the controls are frustrating I think just dealing with that many units is a pain in the ass I'm well I'll put it this way I guess I've never been an RTS fan I went to Blizzard because Starcraft was such a compelling RTS and I never liked RTS's before Starcraft but I felt, uh, still feel, that StarCraft had better control than Warcraft 3 did. And I think that primarily comes down to the pathing of the units and how they often get stuck on each other. So you're like, oh, I want to do this with my guy. And in StarCraft, they would almost immediately do that thing. Like the wraiths, like the air airships in particular, they would just overlap on top of each other and blow stuff up and because of that you could exploit it if you're really good with Templar and like you could psionic storm an entire army away um, and it just felt more responsive I remember it feeling more responsive I should go back and play Starcraft as well Starcraft 1 but Warcraft 3 everything feels slow and plodding and I know it's that's part of the RPG thing but like I, looking at some of the timers we put into those missions or it's like survive for half an hour well i guess that's half an hour of gameplay technically speaking um but is every moment of that gameplay compelling and fun and that's always what i focused on in my levels like when you play the culling of strathholm like this is this might be ego or my nostalgia for my own work so keep that in mind take that with a grain of salt but when I played The Calling of Strathholm today, <clears throat> I felt pressure the whole time. Like, oh god, I've got to be doing this, or else this is going to happen. Whereas when I played other missions, like um, like the the one where you... Uh, like the last one. Like, I didn't feel all that compelled to watch my town too carefully, because I knew like it had crazy defenses and units sitting there, and... I never felt like I had to make hard choices between sending troops to die on the quest with Arthas, which you didn't even know they were going to die. Like, you didn't know you were going to lose those troops, but you do. So there's, like, lack of player information given there, and there's not a compelling reason to send troops there because there's nothing hard about it for a level 10 hero to defeat. So the balance just felt off to me, and it also felt kind of slow and plotting and then at the end it's like build two siege tanks and uh yeah you win like you're never gonna lose a unit unless like how many units did i lose in my entire playthrough of the human campaign three four six if you count seven if you count the sappers that i used to blow up stuff just it's not that hard so if i could go back and redesign all the levels from Warcraft 3, I think I could get the pace to be a lot better. I think I could have a lot more compelling moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Um, in fact, I know I could. <clears throat> and because it's supposed to be a single-player campaign, I would focus a lot more on beat-by-beat -beat gameplay as opposed to what we did, which was like 
this half-assed sort of like we're training the player to do multiplayer so we're going to have bases and building and all that stuff screw all that throw it away give them stuff over time and don't let ha force them to have to rebuild every every uh, every other map and i think it would have been a much more compelling i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying it w we could have made a much more compelling single player game if we had thrown out the notion that we're teaching multiplayer because we sort of half did throw that out there were missions where we just gave you stuff um but we never explained it or gave you a reason to use it like we didn't we didn't teach enough of the core mechanics like you got sorceresses and with no explanation of what they do or, or what they're good for or what they're good at so <clears throat> i think we could have had a lot more interesting and compelling missions that utilized those specific troops that we just gave you in a in a more interesting way so yeah if i could go back and redo uh the missions yeah i would i would i think we could do a lot better now using the same tools too <clears throat> I'm, I, I suspect that the Frozen Throne campaign missions are going to be a lot more interesting than um, what I've played so far. Granted, the human campaign was the first set of missions in the, in the game. So maybe I'm holding it to too high a standard given, given the stress and the pressure given we were going through at the time. But I still think we could have done better than, than we did. But, uh, eh. All right. Um, I'm going to stop here. And uh, I will get to the undead is next, I think. Um, at some point in the future when I have time. <laughs> so.